Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War event objectives for the Ooh Slime Is It Anyways, in which the Sulfur Slime is added to the game. So next week is going to be quite packed with content. This week, a little bit tamer, but still a few things going on. Let's go and uh, start getting into them. So as far as the Sulfur Slime, not too bad. I can stock up on Red Blue Arcanes as well if you end up uh, needing them. Quite a few uh, decent uh, trips end up utilizing it. As far as the trip itself, uh, you can also end up using it for this. Uh, it's actually somewhat decent though very situational. It's kind of underneath the slime category of troop. Uh, there's basically three currently in the game. Oddly enough, one's not a slime. Uh, deck hand that converts everything to blue. Uh, green slime that converts everything to purple and gives you a positive status effect. And this, which is basically inverse, in that it converts yellow to uh, red and then ends up eliminating skills from a random uh, enemy. Uh, overall, um, doesn't have empower or anything, but it does have some useful instances where it has fire link, so you'll be able to get more mana accumulation. The red feeds into itself, so you'll be able to cast it again if you happen to have uh, capability to and it's small chance to end up doing a wish gem onto the board and while those do technically get in the way of its ability if you have a red on your team that has board clear like a divinia or a um like board breaker or something or some kind of red with any amount of explosion or board clear uh you'll basically be able to utilize the chaotic wish so it has some uh capability probably too situational to really use uh that often especially compared to like uh, single empower double empower uh related teams but it might still find its way into some teams on occasion, so definitely a trip to keep an eye on, but uh, not really something that you'll be using a ton, that is for sure. Uh, it might eventually find its way here or there, but uh, won't get its way into much. Uh, it does have an elemental synergy, which is kind of interesting. However, uh, it does have full mana block onto Mirage Queen, which gives half mana start to all elementals, but at least it would make it a little bit closer to actually getting its full mana, getting casted, and kind of rolling from there. And the excess red would still go into Mirage Queen, if uh, nothing else. Plus, it doesn't deny the green, so still would able to be able to uh, utilize it. So, it has some uh, capability, but overall, uh, you're probably not going to see it much, and you're probably not going to be using it much, despite its occasional utility. As far as the event key drop table is considered, uh, it is a broken spire, and oddly enough, uh, this is probably the last and only time I can ever say anything that you see underneath Broken Spire under Show All is actually available. Uh, there is not a single thing here that is locked. Uh, the main reason for this is, uh, so everything here is an event key drop table, and the main reason for that is um, the faction uh, actually has not come out yet. It was supposed to, I believe, like a week or two ago. However, it has gotten delayed until um, next week's Friday. Not this week's Friday, but next week's Friday. One of the many things happening next week. However, uh, yeah, uh, Broken Spire getting its final faction, the final faction in the game. It probably won't be the final faction ever, but the final faction for what currently exists within the game uh, will be occurring uh, next week. Not this week, but next week's Friday. Um, so yeah, we have that. That'll be uh, interesting to see exactly how uh, that ends up uh, panning out. As far as the troops themselves, nothing really too good. You might open some event keys to get like a good goblin counter with empower into devour chance on goblins. Uh, there's some other things I occasionally use, like the Ogres, the Firebomb, but they're such a low rarity, you probably have them laying around. Uh, as far as higher rarity stuff, the only one that you occasionally use, though it kind of gets outdone, is uh, Infernus. Uh, where's Infernus? All this mess there it is. Uh, but Infernus, um, it's a mythic, so it's going to be a really low chance of getting it. And it kind of gets outdone by Zugoth. Uh It's really good at a little bit of everything, but doesn't excel really at any one thing for the most part. It's really well-rounded as like an early game uh, mythic of nothing else. However, probably not too worth going out of your way for, because the people that uh, most need a Infernus are probably in a state of the game where they don't have enough event keys to try to get it, especially since there's another mythic in a drop table that will block your drops. So uh, overall, um, I'd probably say mostly skip on event keys this week. This is a pretty good skip week, uh, unless you're just lucky to get some stars or you're just really lucky for a specific key objective, like some gob chompers to counter some goblin teams, as four times goblins even early on in the game are still used to a, a decent degree, even more so as you keep progressing. Uh, further. So unless there's like a few key things you want to pick up or just some stars, uh, that's pretty much the only reason you'd really open event keys this week. Probably a good time to consider uh, skipping it. As far as events that we have going on, a really straightforward world event, which is always great to see. We have some extra magic bonus. Uh, restriction is a little bit weird, though. Uh, we have a restriction of uh, red and uh, generator, though. At least that's fine, because you do have generators to get strikers up. If it was only strikers, it'd be even more annoying. However, uh, still somewhat possible. Uh, I have a few mana accumulators here and there, uh, like uh, Firebomb. You end up having a uh, Egg Thief somewhere in here. 
Um, so you have a few options. You even have like Divinity and stuff. Uh, you also have uh, Angry Mob and uh, Merilith, so plenty of options. Uh, you have access to every red uh, weapon, so any of like the AoE red weapons, like Dawnbringer, Summer's Fury, similar, uh, going to be some pretty good uh, value because of the extra magic damage. And uh, most Strikers do not have AoE, if even any of them, <laughs> now that I think about it, because it's kind of one of their whole points is their Strikers and that they strike something, uh, not hit all enemies. Uh, that would be more so the mages, so there aren't too many that do it. Oh, also there's Harpy Mage uh, from Man Accumulator. So there's definitely a lot of Man Accumulators, if nothing else. It's more so just finding out what you want to do for damage. And uh, the easiest way to do it is just simply base it entirely around your weapon and just keep casting your weapon over and over again, as uh, Strikers are more so single target units, and you kind of want to be hitting everything simultaneously, and your uh, weapons aren't restricted to these kind of types, so you can simply just use the weapons that hit all enemies. That's going to be the, one of the easier ways to go about the event. And it's just rarity order as far as the event is concerned to work your way from Mythic, go all the way down to uh, Epic and uh, Ultra Rare, and you're good to go for Mythic, Legendary, uh, Epics, and then uh, Ultra Rares. And um, yeah, it's just ca uh, categorized by category, and just simply do it in rarity order will give you the most amount of points. So pretty easy for this week, if nothing else. Uh, aside from that, some other things that we have going on. Uh, we have Cinema Mirage for today. Uh, of course, the weapon is also only available today. Really horrible weapon, though. Uh, but you can get it either through gems through the event or in Soul Forge only today. Uh, not really relevant to ever really bother uh, getting this thing. It's not like the worst faction weapon out there, though. It's definitely not the best and uh, perfectly fine just to skip on. But it's only available today if you want to get it for completionist uh, purposes, so not too big a deal. If you don't, uh, you can either get it here or in uh, Soul Forge, uh, of course depending on which way you want to go about it. Uh, aside from that, um, I think there's two special going on with this faction. Pretty, well, actually not too annoying of a layout. It's pretty much just your, like, your standard average uh, faction. Though kind of funny that we're getting a Cinema Mirage one before the Broken Spire one. There is lore implications there because Cinema Mirage is actually the uh, faction that started all of the factions, or I should say the kingdom that started all the factions. It was linked to the um, epic in uh, Broken Spire. There is lore related to it, and we'll probably get the conclusion to it next week, too, on next week's Friday. Anyway, aside from that, so I currently have a different pet over top of it. However, this Wednesday, we are getting a new pet. Uh, they probably already see there if you don't have a pet active. Uh, it's for Australia Day, some kind of rat thing. Uh, but that's coming in tomorrow, completely cosmetic, but uh, definitely make sure to get it, as it'll probably be at least a year before you can get it again. Not too big a deal, though, because it is just cosmetic after all, but still nice to get them all if you want to. Aside from that, Thursday's class event for Warlord. Uh, most people probably already have this max, because a lot of newer players will uh, keep it uh, as their hero class for quite some time, and unintentionally end up maxing it. So, uh, it's, overall, it's a pretty average hero class, nothing really too special. It does get triple damage burning, though, if nothing else, so it might be a lot of people's first triple damage burning hero class. Their taste of how ridiculously broken broken it could be until they get the actual good ones uh, but for the most part once you have every other hero class unlocked you basically never touch warlord again as it's outclassed by the billion other triple damage burning hero classes they all just do things better than warlord to the point where you basically never touch warlord again once you get some of the other uh, better ones like uh, sun spear and such and uh, slayer class and uh, the hero fint and <laughs> there's probably more dragon guard and uh, any other ones <laughs> like every, well, I believe literally every single triple damage burning is better than Warlord in some way, shape, or form. Because I believe Warlord's main benefit is just like slightly higher attack, which I guess early on in the game isn't bad because your attack's a bit lower. But as you progress through the game, the other benefits that the other classes give are just substantially better than the little bit of extra attack that you're going to be getting off of the Warlord class. And aside from that, as you can see by the timer, Friday we have a Bounty Hunter event, which I actually have a team already made up for. You just have to trade out the uh, weapon because obviously uh, the uh, trip itself does not exist yet. Uh, though, if I'm not mistaken, the trip actually does help a little bit uh, with the event, so... It's not a completely useless troop, kind of like the ones you kind of just plop in the back and does nothing. At least gets to do something this time. As far as Soul Forge, I would say there's two main things to go for. Uh, the main most noteworthy one is not even the Mythic this time around, it is the Legendary. There's only a few Legendaries I would say is worth actually going out of your way to craft, and Tesla, gosh, is definitely one of them. Uh, you might want to craft one or two Teslas if you currently only have zero or one. Uh, the main reason for this is she is one of the best scalers throughout the entire game. However, due to her being a Legendary, uh, it can take a little while for you to get her. Obviously, Legendary is not as hard to get as Mythic, but can still be a little bit um, time-consuming as far as how many weeks, months you might have to go into the game before you finally have a copy of her. However, uh, she can carry you basically through the entire game for almost every game mode in the game. So if you're struggling in pretty much anywheres that can actually use red or blue or, you know, basically use a Tesla, uh, this will basically just allow you to start winning. Um, so she ends up doing scatter damage, 8 scatter damage, which sounds extremely low because that is. However, it has a very insane boost ratio. It's boosted by all ally and, most importantly, enemy armor. 
So she has a four to one ratio. So um, all the armor on your team, you'll gain a boost ratio, um, which basically comes out to one to one on all your armor. So if you do like a full AOE armor buff of uh, 30, well, you're basically gaining 30 damage, 30 scatter damage for her. But more importantly is that it actually boosts based on the enemy's armor. So when you're fighting harder and harder battles, you also scale with those harder and harder battles. And you can also scale yourself by just boosting the armor of your team. So you have two different ways to scale. You can either make your uh, or armor higher, or if the enemy's already hard, well, you just naturally scale off of them. This is extremely effective at taking out uh, harder content. And Double Tesla can take out pretty much any piece of content within the entire game. You basically run a tank in first slot, uh, ideally with like our Skia Shield or, you know, something to gain a little bit of armor if you can. Normally your hero, more often than not, which is like a tanky hero class. Then you follow it by a Tesla or two, ideally two. And then you kind of follow it either with a mana accumulator, like a Leprechaun or something, or if you happen to have it, you can go Holy State Astro, which give all humans 50% mana start. And of course, Tesla is a human, which gives her half mana start. So overall, really, really good pickup. And uh, one of the only few legends I would say is actually worth going out of your way for, as if you're currently struggling with any piece of content within the game, uh, she'll basically make you auto win almost everything. Not literally, but it'll make things... Uh, substantially easier. Anyways, aside from that, uh, Phoenicia is probably the main thing you'd want to go for mythic-wise. I guess it's Upistat here. It's occasionally used. I was using it some, I think, the other week. But uh, Phoenicia, uh, most noteworthy thing here. Um, you probably see me using it almost every day if you catch the streams. Actually, literally every day. Because the main thing she's ran for is the daily system. She has the uh, highest overall damage full AoE hit. And uh, this is really good for uh, killing out uh, any battle where she can actually kill within that range. Uh, this is good for a lot of uh, daily related things. It's also pretty good for trophy farming because she runs Explorer 5, 6, and 7 very effectively for those true trophy gains while also gaining a decent rate of medals. She could theoretically also be ran for uh, vault events in that regard uh, to be able to farm stuff like that while gaining slightly more resources. So she has quite a bit of use cases. Her actual traits are horrific, though to some degree that's almost a good thing because that means if you're earlier on in the game and don't have the traits done to really get her up, um, that doesn't really matter because you just need her ability. Uh, the more magic you have, the better, and Phoenicia is definitely not like a really high early priority. I would say you wouldn't even get her within your first 10 Mythic. She's more so like something you'd ideally want to have within your first 20-ish if you can, um, but definitely not like super high priority to get first. It's um, one of the ones you want to get later down the line, but once you feel like you have enough magic to utilize it, it's definitely um, a really good daily option. Basically, once your Phoenicia can start hitting higher than your Rowan, is likely when you may want to start considering... Um, trying to find yourself a Phoenicia, as uh, it does allow you to hit in a wider range. And that wider range is quite substantially wider than what Rowan does. Uh, while Rowan has its place that it works at its really low range, uh, Phoenicia basically does the middle range until you finally get to the upper range where you have to use uh, bigger options or instant kill options. So uh, she kind of fills like that middle gap. So uh, early on, you don't really need that because Rowan for free from um, Farce of Thorns will cover you for quite some time. But uh, once that stops working, uh, you do eventually switch into uh, Phoenicia. Uh, for content that um, Rowan will no longer be able to one-shot, but Phoenicia can one-shot. So worth considering getting at some point. Uh, once you do, you use it almost on a daily basis, at least to some degree. It doesn't save you that much time every day, but it definitely adds up over time and... Uh, um, worth considering if you're kind of uh, at that point within the game. Aside so uh, from that, as far as weapons, there is one thing I highly advise not leaving this week with if you're going to get anything, um, even uh, compared to like that weapon that's only available today, not even really that worth it. However, there is anything that's worth it. It is Flamer Fur. This is available all week, as is everything else other than the uh, Eighth Sin. But uh, Flamer Fur. And this is another one you probably see me use pretty often. Uh, used for quite a few teams. Uh, most noteworthy is uh, the No Mythic team of Yagwe Queen Etanya. So that combo um, is one of the better no mythic teams within the game um, that uh, you can end up using Flamer Fur with. Uh, the one I probably use it with most these days is using it with a Zoo Goth build and running it on Explore 12. Well, you can kind of do red man accumulation off of Urskia Crown and kind of get that same mechanic. Uh, this does it a lot better because it has burn and it has uh, more red creation. Um, so it ends up getting overall more value than what you would end up getting from other similar options. So if you can get your hands on this thing, uh, highly advise doing so before the end of the week. A uh, really high priority uh, weapon to get is it's basically the best way to create red off of a hero weapon if the only thing you're looking for is red and not a double color uh, with some kind of weird like combination team. But if you're just looking purely for red for your team, uh, this is a really great way to go. Works well with Rat Thrall, works well with Zugoth, works well with Yagwe, Queen Etania, and quite a few other options. Pretty much anything, obviously, that needs 
needs a lot of red on the board, it will work uh, very well with. Uh, aside from that, if you happen to have a lot of spear resources, uh, Doomed Club is one of the best sex doom weapons in the game. It's one of the ones that do damage to all enemies as well as having to Doom Skull convert. Highly advise getting it. It's also among one of the better ones in the game because of its synergy with Truffle and Beatrix. Uh, Truffle and Beatrix are both a green blue that end up creating brown and uh, green. Uh, this is very relevant because the weapon itself uses brown and it converts all uh, green into Doom Skulls. So it gets really good effectiveness with these two troops. Uh, Truffle, um, probably even more so because it does physical damage to synergize with the physical damage that this does. Uh, giving you double physical damage while feeding brown into the weapon while giving you the green you need in order to convert it. Uh, you do have to be a little careful with this because after you do this it might be a little bit hard to green mana accumulate. Uh, so if you don't already have the Truffle, uh, like a double Truffle with one of them already at spare full mana, you might not want to go for the convert quite yet unless you're doing it for like the finisher but overall really really great uh, synergy and uh, damage output and that's not the only way of using it of course you can use it with non-truffle stuff as well however uh, truffle and beatrix definitely some of the more noteworthy synergies that it ends up getting and one of the reasons why i would actually consider this on the better half of the better best six doom weapons so uh highly advise if you can uh, get 2200 brown uh, in the rest of the requirement before the end of the week uh, I would definitely advise uh, getting your hands on this thing. Uh, the rest is pretty much worth uh, ignoring, other than, of course, Flame Refer, which is probably even higher priority than Doomed Club, as I personally feel like this might actually get used more, uh, even though this does have a really decent uh, use case for it. Uh, though, of course, it is absurdly annoying to actually max these things, which is the main problematic thing, whereas Flame Refer is really easy to max to go get its burn on cast and uh, everything else that ends up doing with a little bit extra uh, effects there. Anyways, uh, as per usual, uh, all the teams that we're about to go over will be in the description below, but let's start going into the teams. So uh, there are several I wanted to go over. First off is the world event that I'm most likely going to be using, the world event team. It's just a Merolith with uh, Dawnbringer into a double firebomb, basically Dawnbringer giving us some barrier, Frost Mage to get it up even quicker. Uh, Merolith is going crazy on mana accumulation. One kind of funny thing is uh, normally Merolith does 6 true damage to all enemies, however we do have spell increase. And uh, similar to Tesla, while you don't actually get to increase their damage with magic, one thing that you can do is increase their damage with fairy fire or spell damage increase when it's uh, associated to an event. So uh, mine's actually doing like, I think like 15 true damage right now <laughs> because all the extra spell damage buff that ends up getting. So that's kind of funny seeing her be able to do more than six as it's a very rare occurrence, but you're mostly using her of course for her uh, almost full board clear, especially if you set to magic metals. I don't believe I even have metal magic metal set right now. She can almost end up doing a full board clear with her amount of magic this late into the game. So you basically just get that for a bunch of mana accumulation. She feeds into herself, she feeds into Dawnbringer and just keeps spamming like that. If you need something a little bit safer and need kind of like a lower rarity one, you can do Angry Mob, which has a way to resummon over top of these fire bombs. Um, it's still the same. It's actually, no, it's actually a slightly lower rarity than uh, Merilith, uh, which is one of the reasons uh, for actually using it too. It's slightly easier to obtain just uh, randomly. Uh, aside from that, you can end up doing it with Summer's Fury if you don't have Dawnbringer. It's just kind of a standard AoE weapon that you get pretty early into the game. For the exact amount of red mastery but somewhere around like 20 30 uh you definitely have it by the time you're level 200 or above you'd definitely have enough to uh, end up getting it by then and you basically just run this weapon with angry mob uh, obviously the angry mob does block you on red but you are forced to have to use red so you kind of have to and as these fire bombs die out you'll occasionally be getting angry mob summoned so you will eventually be able to repopulate your team and as long as you have at least 20 magic uh, you will be making an angry mob that is level 20 at the full amount of level um so you will be fine to uh, resummon your full angry mob and and just have three man accumulators basically to uh, have a bunch of resummon to back up your uh, Summer's Fury. And then just went off of that. And I also have uh, Sun Spear here just for Red Perpetual Storm in order to make it a little bit easier since your whole team will basically be three angry mobs into a Summer's Fury by the end of the battle. So we'll help you uh, get a little bit more red man accumulation since obviously everything is very red heavy uh, on the team. Aside from that, as far as the uh, faction that we have going on for the Sin faction, as far as the lower range, uh, quite a few different ways to do it. Uh, this time I actually just went with a weapon-based team, just to kind of show. Uh, normally I don't actually show these for factions, though of course uh, you can just go with AoE uh, weapon. For uh, factions, it's always a strategy to go down. Uh, this time just simply with a gargoyle with a bunch of purple. It's a purple-red uh, restriction, if I'm not mistaken. So um, you can end up kind of going in there. Your weapon doesn't have to be red, but uh, this one happens to be using a red weapon. And just use with a Frost Mage. You can go with a tankier here class and first slot if you want to, uh, like a Titan or something. Uh, aside from that, as far as the higher range, um, kind of similar, kind of basing your own weapon again, just going with a, uh, a uh, Zugoff uh, Mang which uh, mostly just gives you the attack to actually one-shot with uh, Zugoff and then just kill everything with Zugoff Skulls. Uh, get the insta-kill and go from there with a bunch of mana accumulating uh, options to uh, back it up. Uh, aside from that, 
Uh, as far as uh, pure faction is concerned, there's a couple different ways you can end up doing this. This one I end up going down the Iron Jaw route, mostly because he has a nice uh, score reduction to go with him. Uh, you generally don't want to cast its ability too much because you kind of need it as your win condition, unless you're going for uh, all-in casting. Um, however, you do generally cast it about once or twice just to get him off of kill range, but you're mostly using him for his base durability. You can even double up on him if you want. However, the main way you're winning this faction is with Tartarus more often than not. It deals damage to an enemy boosted by their attack. Uh, this is one of the few that actually has boost ratio out of any of the factions, which is kind of uh, uh, interesting. You can end up doing this to uh, boost ratio off of their uh, higher attack once they're at you know, pure faction 500, and you'll actually be able to almost, um, I think, two-shot them? It's like two or three shot. Like you, you get some pretty decent damage out of it. So with three of them, especially if you have potion effects and enchant, uh, should be overall not too bad of a uh, uh, faction. You could go with double double if you wanted to, to have a little more of a tankiness. You could go with like the man accumulator thing. But our Torteris is going to be the main way you win out. Uh, most of his traits aren't really doing anything for you though, so you're mostly just using his ability, trying to get him up pretty quick, taking as much yellow as you possibly can, hoping there's a bunch on the starting board, and then kind of just go crazy casting him three times, kill out whatever the biggest objective is on the opposing team, and then kind of just whittle their team down one objective at a time until they're just completely dead. And that's pretty much how the pure faction would go down. Definitely not one of the easier ones, but uh, it's kind of mid-range. Actually, it might be on the slightly easier side of mid-range, but... Uh, Still, it, it's kind of clunky. It doesn't really have a good way to man accumulate, and its tank is pretty average. So, um, not too much going on there. It's a pretty average faction overall. Anyways, as far as Warlord Hero Class, a couple different ways to go about this. This one just shows a Dawnbringer triple Gob Tromper. You could literally just go four Gob Tromper if you really wanted to, if you're just doing the free side, or, you know, if you're just doing it for the 20, uh, 25 gems. But uh, basically, this is a Dawnbringer with some Gob Chompers to clean up in case they have that resummon thing uh, that has a 100% chance or anything else that might be annoying there. You just cast out Dawnbringer, cast out Dawnbringer again if you're at like the midsection, and then Gob Chompers just kill whatever is left, if there's even anything uh, left. And as far as this Friday, as far as Bounty Hunter, um, ignore the Emerald Tier. Emerald Tier should be whatever the new Bounty Hunter troop is that's coming out to this Friday. Uh, do not put Emerald Tier there or else you will be penalized. But this is mostly just a placeholder because obviously I cannot show it with the troop that does not exist yet because it doesn't come out till Friday. But this is the new Bounty Hunter troop that comes in this Friday. But it's Ogris, Warwolf, the new Bounty Captain that comes in on Friday. And Togaraki Warrior is going to be the uh, team. Uh, a little bit of a weird team because that uses Togaraki Warrior in the back. Hopefully there's nothing in the Bounty Hunter that hits the back. Normally there isn't and I doubt there would be this time around. However, if there is, you could just reshuffle some. Maybe move Togaraki up like one and uh, you'd be good to go. But basically... Uh, we're going to be using Ogres for the mana accumulation, Warwolf for more mana accumulation. If I'm not mistaken, the Bounty Hunter also does more mana accumulation. And then Tukaraki just to do what Tukaraki does, which is kind of just spam itself like crazy. And uh, kind of go from there. Uh, the other alternative, of course, would be to switch out Warwolf for another true damage option. And go double true damage with uh, Ogres. Uh, the new bounty troop and uh, Tukaraki with one more true damage poke. Uh, really, it just depends exactly what's available on the bounty hunter day. We don't really know until it actually uh, happens what each one of the battles will be or what the 20th battle will be. But uh, generally, this should be something that will work. It's a lot more of a mana cycle team uh, compared to most. Uh, having only one damage source can be a little clunky at times. But uh, if you have enough damage, it does end up uh, working out. And uh, really, just comes down to what is available for the Bounty Hunter. But of course, it's pretty much a standard Bounty Hunter as far as just use Turgoraki and then win. Unfortunately, you can't multi-up on it. Otherwise, you will lose points. They have to all be unique. But anyways, guys, that will wrap it up for now. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the uh, comment section below. And I'll make sure to get around uh, to everything. As per usual, we'll still be streaming every single night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we do uh, every night here on the uh, YouTube channel. Kind of just messing around uh, with everything that uh, goes on uh, throughout the week, uh, every week in the game. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you later. And thank you all so much for uh, watching. Uh, goodbye, everyone.